Holla Peeps, it's your girl Cherie, reporting live for Cherie TV. Your girl is getting her coffee on. Got my Joe Osteen on. Just woke up. As if you can't tell. I would try to change, make sure everybody liked me. But as I continued to renew my mind, I realized I didn't need people's approval. I have Almighty God's approval. What was happening? So Osteen, he's my boy. Baby calls him Blinky. He might blink a lot. But he's good. He's not one of those hellfire and damnation preachers, you know what I mean? How could you not love Joel Osteen? Maybe you're not totally out yet either, but don't get discouraged. God is still working on you. Every day you think the right thoughts, you are breaking out of that cocoon a little bit more. And at the right time, you're going to take off. God is going to take you places that you could never go on your own. Men in the scripture by the name of Gideon. God wanted him to lead the people of Israel against an opposing army. Gideon and all these worms, yeah, Gideon. You never think of him. One day, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. Said, "Hello, Gideon, you mighty man of fearless courage." I can imagine Gideon looking around, thinking, "Who is he talking about? I am not a mighty man of fearless courage." Gideon was plain, intimidated, insecure, just the opposite. But notice. God didn't call him what he was. God called him what he could become. God sees your potential. God knows what you're capable of. You may feel weak, but God calls you strong. Powder. You may be intimidated today, but God calls you confident. You may feel less than, God calls you well able. If the angel of the Lord were to appear to you today, he would say the same thing he said to Gideon. Hello, Mary, you mighty woman of fearless courage. Hello, Frank, you mighty man of fearless courage. Hello, people of Lakewood, you mighty people of fearless courage. Why don't you get in agreement with God? Start believing what he says about you. Gideon answered the angel back in verse 15. He said, how am I supposed to save Israel? I come from the poorest family in all of the nation. And I am the least one in my father's house. Notice those worthy thoughts. A lot of times, like Gideon, we do the same thing. I can't do anything great. I'm not that talented. If I was a different nationality, if I had a better personality, Joel, if I hadn't made so many mistakes, get rid of the excuses. You are equipped. You are empowered. You already have everything you need to fulfill your destiny. It's in you right now. Now you've got to do your part to bring it out. I read about an older gentleman. He lived in a small hut on an island out in the South Pacific. He was a well-known sculptor. He spent his whole life working with wood and carving different items. Very talented. One day he was walking by this beautiful plantation. The wealthiest man on the island lived there. He saw these big tree trunks that had been cut down and were piled up in a big stack. He asked the owner what they were going to do with it. It should you know, not black out on his feet because baby got me a fan to go underneath the computer so it does not overheat. The owner looked at him kind of okay. and said, you want an old dead piece of useless wood? Go ahead and take it. He hauled it away on his wagon got it to his hut and stood it up on the inside. It should help too from he with my Skype very slowly, as well. Analyzing, thinking about it. It's as if he was trying to release something that was trapped on the inside. A couple of hours later, he started carving away, whittling with precision day after day. Two weeks after that, he had carved the most beautiful eagle you could ever imagine. It was majestic looking. Had his wings out. 
kept back scoring through the air. He put it on the front porch of his little hut. One day, it just so happened that plantation owner was walking by, saw the eagle, was so impressed. He walked up to it and began to marvel at the detail, how magnificent it was. He said to the man, where in the world did you get this? I'd like to buy this from you. The sculptor kind of laughed and said, no, sir, it's not for sale. He was insisting. He said, name your price, I'll pay you whatever you want. The sculptor finally said, all right, how about $500? The man paid him as they were walking away with him. The sculptor said, sir, I don't know if you realize this, but you just bought back the piece of useless wood that you gave me several weeks ago. The next day, the sculptor walked by the plantation. There was a sign out front. It said, croutons for sale. testing it out. I had the door open. He learned his lesson. I'm pretty sure it's on. The sculptor saw something in that discarded piece of wood that other people could not see. The plantation owner saw it as trash, useless, as of no value. But the sculptor was able to look beyond the outside, beyond the flaws, and he saw its potential. He knew what it could become. It's the same way with our God. Your Creator can see things in you that other people cannot see. Sometimes people will try to push you down, make you feel insignificant. Sometimes our own thoughts will try to convince us that we don't measure up. But God looks beyond the surface, beyond the mistakes we've made, beyond what somebody said about you, and God sees your incredible value. You may think, no, oh, I've messed up, I have blown it, I've failed, I'm all washed up, but God still sees the eagle in you. God doesn't just see what you are, He sees what you can become. Now you've got to do your part. Get rid of those condemning thoughts. Get rid of what somebody has spoken oh, okay. over you and start renewing your mind. Down deep, start believing. Where is my lipstick? Restore, talented, valuable. Even if you have made mistakes, hey, y'all know I need my lipstick. I can't watch the show Osteen and hang out with y'all. To where he wants you to be. I'm gonna start thinking about baby calling him blinky and shit. He was he told me to see him. He cheated people. It was good. He tricked his own brother out of his birthright. Uh oh, where's my he had a lot of flaws. He was blush brush compared to that discarded piece of wood. Surely God would find something to do with him. Surely God would find somebody oh, there it is. No, God doesn't judge the way we judge. God doesn't look on the outside. God looks at the heart. And even when we make mistakes, God doesn't write us off. He doesn't say, you had your shot, you're done. No, God always gives us another chance. Why? Because God can see the eagle in the wood. He can see the butterfly in the world. He can even see a champion in a failure. But it's up to us. The only way that transformation will take place is you have to believe that you're forgiven. Believe that there's mercy for every mistake. Believe that you are who God says you are. One time in the Old Testament, an army invaded Jerusalem, kidnapped some of the people, and killed their king. For the first time, the people of Israel were without a leader. They were discouraged, didn't know what to do. As they sat there thinking that it was over, Maybe the prophet Micah rose up and said, Hey, why are you crying? Why are you discouraged? Is there not a king in you? I believe God is saying the same thing to each one of us. There's a king in you. You may have made mistakes, but the king is still in you. You may have gone through disappointments. People may have treated you unfairly. You missed wow. the opportunities. But let these words sink deep down in your spirit. The king is still in you. The queen is still in you. Uh oh, did you hear that, John? He said the king is still in you. The queen is still in you. Carry yourself with confidence. You have royal blood flowing through your veins. You are wearing a crown of favor. I'm not looking at ordinary people. I'm looking at royalty. I can see kings. I can see queens. I can see your crown of favor. I can see your robe of honor. I'm looking at children of the most high cause. Now you got to start calling out that king, calling out that queen. you got to release what God put on the inside. 
What do you think, y'all? This is not for me today. I made lots of mistakes. I've lived a rough life. No, that didn't change what God put in you. You couldn't be any worse than Jacob. He failed again and again. But God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. It never runs out. God will never give up on you. God kept working on Jacob, making him and molding him. One day, God said, Jacob, I'm going to change your name. His name literally meant to see. I feel very naked said, without my lips today. You've gone from a worm to a butterfly, from a discarded piece of wood to a beautiful eagle. Your new name is going to be Israel. Israel means prince with God. He went from being called a chief to being called a king. Now when somebody said, hello, Israel, they were saying, hello, king. Nice. Computer would have shut down on me by now. It's so hot outside, it just sucks all the air out. This is great. A great new day for Cherie TV. The fan fucking works. Yes. Power. Well, I'm going to go on a search for my lipstick. And there will be some more Cherie TV coming at you. Love you guys.